Well, hello, everybody. We recently had a former student from National Jinan University visit us here in Calgary. Now, Sally had been studying in Canada for a year, and we thought that we would sit down with her and get some of her impressions and help you learn about the process that she went through and what it was like for a graduate of National Jinan University to spend time living overseas. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you our talk in two parts. So the first part that you'll see now is her impressions and what made her want to come to Canada. Then the second part, we're going to go into detail a little bit further about what exactly the school was like, working, and costs. All right? Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with the first part of our talk today, Sally's impressions of living overseas. Here we go. Well, hello, what's your name? Hi, everyone, my name is Sally. Okay, well, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you chose to study in Canada, especially uh, Vancouver. Sure, um, I graduated from the International Business Studies at National China University. And actually, I've dreamed of starting abroad since I was really young, but I didn't apply for any like the exchange student program while I was studying. But after working for almost four years, I was wondering what my future would be like. So I want to step outside my comfort zone and try to do something like working holiday and to stay in a foreign country and enjoy different cultures and lifestyles. That's and the reason why <laughs> I choose Canada is because I have uh, I've been to Canada for traveling before with my family and I really love the natural scenery and the people there. So I choose Canada. Okay, so how did you prepare before leaving Taiwan? I, I was really busy working that time. That's why I just um, searched <laughs> online for the experience agent I found online to handle the study and work and like something plain they can plan for me so it's okay. quite easy so what kind of agent is this then it's not a travel agent it's a uh, what um so i didn't i didn't mention that my visa actually is a co-op visa it's a c o o p is co-op student visa um it's a visa that allows me to study and work at the same time so which is really good opportunity for international students to broaden our horizons, enjoy a different life. Yeah, and also we can make some money there. How much did it cost, can I ask? Actually, the agent, we didn't need to pay for the agent. We just need to pay for the tuition to the college. Oh. So I think the agent just earned money from the college, like commission, something like that. But we don't need to pay for the agent. But how much I pay for school is like around eight, eight thousand five hundred Canadian dollars. I don't know how much is it in Taiwanese dollars right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Around that. that okay, way. and that was for how long then? How long could you study for that eight thousand five hundred dollars? If the visa is like working holiday, is exactly one year. But my visa is co-op visa, so they give me they gave me more time to stay here till June. So it's around 15 months. How about the language barrier? How was it for you? Oh, actually, I really love English, but it doesn't mean that my English is good. So <laughs> I've tried everything to describe myself and my feeling and my thoughts with my limited English gesture and with the help of Google, of course. Oh. So yeah, I find it really challenging for me to express express myself accru accurately, and sometimes I like lacked confidence, like everyone, right? Because it's not our mother tongue. So, however, the only way to improve English is to use it. So, I'm not 
entirely sure if my English skills have improved, but I、um, no longer feel ashamed when speaking English, which is good. What kind of advice would you give then some like students that are coming? Like, should they be worried about their English? Um, I think maybe that if it's turned to the t- English test, maybe around、uh, TOEIC, maybe around eight hundred. I think it's、okay. it's good enough. And the only way you you can improve your English is to speak more. And don't be ashamed for your English. And how much would you guess your English improved because of staying here? It's a lot, especially in speaking. Because in Taiwan, we didn't have that kind of environment to practice our speaking skills. But right now, here, you need to use your English to like order the food, or <laughs> if you have anything, need to complain to the customer service, and you need to use make effort to. Describe yourself and complain to the, to the the shop or something, right? So you can improve a lot because of you because you you have a lot of different situations. Tell us、uh, two or three different big important cultural differences between Taiwan and Canada. Sure.、Um, the first one I think in foreign countries it's super easy to start conversations. It's not like Necessary like flirting, but sometimes people passing by might just stop, stop and be like, "Oh, your perfume smells amazing, and、uh, I really like it." Something like that, and or some people just compliment your outfit, like, "Oh, I love your style. It looks fantastic on you." These compliments from strangers can totally make your day, but in Taiwan, it's. Totally different story because people might feel like you are bothering them. That's what I feel, and people here are also friendly and like to greet into you. And even they can strike up the conversation even on the bus or on the sky train. And two strangers can just like have a、uh, a conversation even though they didn't know each other before. Oh, that's great. Okay, so conversation, yes.、Uh, Canadians like to talk. We say <laughs> so. We're very easy to talk to. Okay.、Um, well, that's one. Can you give me another difference? Yeah.、Uh, I think、um, Canadians they like to talk in a positive way. Like、yeah. they love to use words like perfect, amazing, fantastic instead of just saying, "Oh, it's okay." So it sounds really soothing for me.、Um, how about something maybe、uh, negative, maybe a cultural difference that maybe you found difficult? There are some problems in Vancouver right now, like drug problems, yeah, and like homeless problem. There are there are like really serious problems here. Do you ever feel、uh, in danger, or did you ever have any problems? That's kind of scary, but we didn't have that kind of situation. Where did you visit in Canada? I've been to so many places, and Vancouver is a really great destination for outdoor activities because they have a lot of natural resources. So、uh, you can go mountain climbing, hiking, and skiing or snowboarding. And there are so many parks in Vancouver, so you can just strolling in the park that. The vibe would be really nice, and they also have the sea and the beach, so you can enjoy the sunshine, the winds. So that's really nice. And、uh, I've been to, I have visited Banff for try twice. That was really nice. Well, you were able to see the Northern Lights、uh, in Banff, also. Is that true? Yeah, I I saw the I saw the Aurora. Aurora lights this time in Banff. That's so amazing. So pretty. The color, the colorful sky, so pretty. I think if students wanna like visit Vancouver, it would be okay. Give us a couple of ideas on what you have gained personally from staying in Canada this time. This is my first time to go to a foreign country by myself, and I feel that I'm becoming more independent and thoughtful. Um, being abroad, I need to be extra careful because I'm the only one that I can rely on. So, 
I need to, um, I need to do everything by my by myself, and the only one I can trust is myself. So I find my inner strength growing, and I'm not sure if it did change me, or it just revealed a part of who I already was. So I feel a older side of myself emerging. And I also like the feeling of being able to fully enjoy freedom, because you are not live with your family, and you can just manage your time, your schedule by yourself. So that's nice. Great. Okay. Would you recommend this then for other people? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a really good experience for you to grow up. <laughs> And there you have part one of our two-part discussion with Sally, who studied overseas for more than one year. So, stay tuned, and next time we'll be able to show you a little bit more detail about what exactly she went through, from picking a school to her impressions of the program to working in Canada while she was studying. So, come back, and we'll finish up our interview with Sally next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye.